Hi and welcome to my channel, I'm Simon and today I am back with a video all about big books and my plans to try and get to more of them over this summer in what I'm calling the Savage Summer of Stonkers. I know that I normally call big books junksters, but for alliteration's sake, I'm calling them stonkers for this video. Before I go any further, I did want to mention I have got this gorgeous summary top. I'm going to film um, a summaries video in it after this sort of go sort of live in mid July, I think. Um, and it's from the lovely Sunnies, um, which is an amazing book truck, which is started by CJ over at CJ Reads, who's a channel I adore. I love the sweatshirt so much, I got this long tee as well. I really, really, really love the sunset. Anyway, I'll link those down below because it's really, really key, if you can, to support curators. Curators? No. <laughs> support To support creatives that you really love, if you can. So there's just a mention of that. It's not Spawn. I bought this all by myself because I love what CJ does and who she is and everything she is about. So, and if you see this CJ, I hope your house moves gone okay. Anyway, right, let's get cracking because I have here 15 books, big chunky books, I would really, really like to get to that. I've actually given their own shelves, so obviously I've taken them off all for this, um, so that I can sort of see my progress. I've picked 15 because this summer I'm away. Well, it was for 15 weeks. It now looks like it's going to be more like 16 weeks away from home. I think in July I'm back like once, maybe twice, August a couple of times, and then I'm here three days a week in September before then October. Free as a bird. <laughs> anyway, or possibly just staying at home and recuperating, catching up with everything. Anyway, um, I'm not going to read one of these a week. That would be insane. Um, but I would like like to have these as sort of a starting point to get through more chunky books. It also really helped make quite a lot of space on my other shelves, which you can see in my latest Sorting the Shelves video. But without wanging on for too long, because it has almost been two minutes and I've not held up a book yet, here are the 15 stonkers that I would like to get to this summer. Starting off with the book that kind of started it all off full stop really, and that is Great Circle. I have still not finished this. I am that far through, you can see the bookmark. Now I started this last November and then we got Omicron and work got really, really bonkers busy and I couldn't concentrate on it then. And then I was trying to read it when it was really, really busy at work before the Women's Prize. And it will be really busy this summer, but not like a different city every day for four weeks like it has been. It's more like I'm in a different city every four to five days over that 15 weeks. Um, so yeah, so I think I'm gonna have more time to get to it because I do want to finish with it because so many people loved it, including my mother. Um, and I liked it. It's all about a woman called Marion who wants to circumnavigate the world in a plane, hence Great Circle. And then it uh, goes to Hollywood in the sort of near present day where someone is playing her. Um, and I didn't like that, that storyline so much, but I've heard it gets really, really important as it goes on. So there's that one. Then one that I said I was gonna read when it announced it was the winner when I was on my one seat a day over the last how many weeks it's been um, and that's Tomb of Sand by Geetanjali Shri translated by Daisy Rockwell. It won the Booker International. Did I just say that? Possibly. I'm not sure. Um, and yeah I wanted to read it before it won. Uh, it winning made me want to read it all the more and yeah this is something that I would like to really really get to over the summer um, especially because when I read fiction um, set in India, I tend to really, really love it. And this is, I've heard like a big Indian epic. And so, yeah, I'm just really, really, really keen to get to it. So uh, yeah, and it, for some reason this doesn't intimidate me. And, and that's something about big books. Sometimes they can be intimidating, but sometimes I just want to get lost in them. One that um, I'm hoping to read in July with the lovely Renee, whose channel I will link below is Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. I've had this on my shelves forever. I did say to Renee we'd read it at the beginning of July but I might have to put that back because I've got an idea for some reason that I want to do at the very beginning of July because they're books that I've not got to around to reading yet this year and really really wanted to and this is an older book but there are quite a few books that have been around. I mean this is not like old old, this is a couple of years old, it's not like a modern, even a modern classic or anything although that said it's kind of become a cult classic because so many people love it. I also really really want to watch the television show and I believe this is about a family who moved from Korea to Japan and it's what happens there and I don't think it's good and you follow this kind of family dynasty and I don't know much about the history of um, Korea and Japan. I would like to know more. I think fiction can be amazing for getting you to discover more like that and so this I think is going to be fabulous. 
a book that I have just meant to read and was one of the books that was picked from my prompt jars, which have sadly gone on hiatus, possibly for the rest of the year, we'll see. Partly because for the next three months, I won't really be at home, so I won't be able to pick them, but also because I was ending it with four prompts a month and it wasn't working, so I decided to stop. But any book that I picked from the prompt jars, I've put on some shelves down there. Can you see, just peeking down there? And so I'll get through them because, you know, I wanna try and do the stuff I want to. In terms of the books, uh, in terms of the book prompts me and my mum gave each other, I may well do a video on how I'm getting on with that and what books I'm planning to read over the forthcoming months to tick all of the prompts off of the year because I think with that one if you're doing the savage prompts then um you've got like all year to do it you don't have to do one a month you might want to do one a month because that spaces it out better but anyway so the Poisonwood Bible I've meant to read this for ages it was one of my grand's favorite 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 books and I haven't got around to it I don't know anything about it I did try the lacuna and did not like it but I've kept it and that's still on my shelves because that could have been a big old chunkster to take around this year but I think this one I'm gonna give a whirl and see how I get on with it and then maybe head to the lacuna at another point. Because, yeah, was I saying? Something I love um, really concise, condensed fiction. It's why I tend to go for a lot more sort of shorter novels. Um, and some people say, oh, is it because you get to read more books in like less time? And I don't, it's not that exactly, but there probably is somewhere in my subconscious a bit of me that is like, oh, the more short books I read, the more books I'll get through each year. And that's not what reading should be about. It shouldn't be a race and it shouldn't be a ticking off exercise or ticking boxes exercise um so yeah anyway meant to read this for ages hopefully this summer i finally will i discovered marianne keys last year i mean i've known about marianne keys for ages but i discovered her last year with um the sky arts book club and she was on it with grown-ups which i absolutely bloody loved i also read that with melanie for our book club which has been on hiatus but will be coming back this autumn so there we go once i finished all of this touring malarkey um and I really want to read Rachel again, which is uh, Marianne Key's latest novel, but this is the prequel, so I want to get to that one first. And also, I have not read many sequels, and I was thinking about this because I may or may not have filmed the mid-year book freakout tag, which I know everyone and their uncle has done, but I still want to do it. I was going to say everyone and their mother because I've tried to get my mum to do it as well, but um, anyway, there we go. I don't know what's going on with my hair at the moment, and I do apologise for it. It's gone wild, but um, yeah, so I want to get to this, and actually, because I'm going to be an island for part of my travels, maybe this would be a good uh, book to read then because Marianne Keyes is from Ireland, although it's set in New York, and I am meant to be going to New York in October, so maybe this should wait until then. <laughs> we shall see, but it's definitely in the mix and on the shelves for books that I like to read, as is Marriage by Susan Ferrier, which I bought ages ago and is meant to be like Scotland's great Gothic no Victorian novel. And I love Gothic Victorian novels. I have not read any for ages, along with um, actually the next author I'm gonna be talking about. I haven't read one, any of theirs for ages either, um, but they are my favorite sort of book. And I'm gonna be in Scotland this summer so I thought that would be quite cool and maybe I should do a Scottish themed reading vlog so I could read this, I could read um, uh, Young Mungo, I could read several other books, uh, what's the Hair House I really want to read because that's actually set in part of Scotland that I'm going to be going to so yeah this is very much on my uh, periphery and will probably get read quite soon. Me and Tom um, of Tom Read Things, I, why did I really really trip over that? Um, we um, were going to read it together, but I haven't heard from him for ages. Um, but um, yeah, that was one of the reasons that I got this in the first place, because it was planned to be a buddy read with him. Then, Daphne du Maurier, one of my favourite authors. Rebecca, one of my favourite books. When was the last time I read a du Maurier? I have not got a clue. It's been that long. And so I was thinking, right, it's time to head to her. And this is just one of the biggest of hers that I've got. So... Now, I was going to say, I should have said what defies a chunkster to me. It's anything over 480 pages, possibly 488 if I'm being really precise and pernickety. All of these books come in over, I think, 500 pages, so they all count. Um, but yeah, I don't know anything about this other than I think it's, again, a family dynasty novel. Um, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But it was all going on on Hungry Hill, apparently. There's a castle. There's some mountains. I just think this is going to be like... I don't know, a really good sort of book you can get properly lost in with lots of characters and sneaking behind people's doors and all that kind of stuff. Then I read the first in um, this new series from Kate Moss, 
um, the burning chambers and I really, really loved it. And I've had the City of Tears to read for ages. Um, I waited for the paperback to come out because it's more, um, well, the reason that most of these are paperbacks actually is because they're easier to cart about than hardbacks. Um, so yeah, um, I've got it. Want to read it? Love Kate Moss's writing. Really loved her quick reads, like the polar opposite of this, which was all about the uh, volcano on one of the. Oh, what? It's not like Fjord of Ventura. It's one of those islands. It begins with M. I can't think what it's called. It's part of the Canary Islands, but that's what I mean. I thought that was brilliant, and I'm really, really looking forward to this and heading back to the um, story of Minou uh, that we followed in the first one, which I won't say more on because I don't want to spoil. Then an author who I had a few chunks of hers that I could have picked, but I went for this one as I have um, a finished, really beautiful hardback edition that I would like to get off my, I have, I, I talked about this in my previous video, where I was going through sorting the bookshelves. I have bookshelves in the spare room behind me um, where I keep all of the um, sort of, extra copies I get of books and then once I've read them they obviously come off these shelves and those shelves and the hardback of Alias Grace is on those shelves. This is a really nice old edition that I remember my mum having on her shelves, it's not her edition, I bought this in charity shop 50p um, years and years and years ago. Haven't read, meant to, it was between this and the um, Robber Bride but I started the Robber Bride and didn't quite get into it so I think I'm going to try this one um, and give it a different, oh excuse me I feel like I'm going to because I wanted to read The Robber Riders like a project last year. Oh, the hay fever at the moment is absolutely out of this world. Bad, in a bad way, I mean, not a good way. Um, so yeah, Margaret Atwood. I also really want to watch the adaptation of this, as I do Pachinko, which I think I mentioned, maybe I didn't, I can't remember. Speaking of my mother, though, and my mother's shelves, while we're in Italy, she was reading this, which is The Light Years by Elizabeth Jane Howard, which I know is also one of Elizabeth Day's favourite books. And um, yeah, I've been meaning to read this series for Yonks, The Castle at Chronicles. This is the first one in the series. Mum loved it. I know it's quite a slow burn, she said. And I've seen the lovely Carrie over at Tea Books and Breathe on Instagram um, get going through the series and she's really, really enjoying it. So yeah, this is something that I would like to get to. This feels more holiday than necessarily while I'm traveling. Um, I don't know why that is, but it is. And speaking of Tom Reads Things again, honestly, it's like I'm stuck on repeat with things. Um, but he um, raved about The Eighth Life when he read it by Nino Haritishvili. Um, and this is like a proper, this is the biggest book that I've picked off the shelves. It is almost a thousand pages. I think it's the, again, a family dynasty. That seems to be a theme with big books, but it's a family dynasty that looks, I believe, at a chocolate making family. And I am all about chocolate. So although I prefer crisps to chocolate, if you're asking, thank you for asking. And um, yeah, so I really, really want to get uh, to get to this one. Um, I think the Russian Empire is something I'm intrigued by um, and obviously very anti with what everything's going on in Ukraine, but I feel like I need to be better educated on. And again, I do think fiction can do it. I know this isn't set in Russia, but it's sort of on the edge of Russia. Um, so it may give me some more insight. We shall see. I um, I really need to read some Ukrainian fiction actually this year. That's one thing that I really, really want to do. Maybe I will do a, not just a summer reading recommendations video or my summer TBR, but like summer plans and it'd be a bit looser. We'll see. We'll see how that really goes. Um, a book that I went to read since it came out, or well, it came out, did it come out earlier this year, but got sent to me. Oops. They've toppled. The tomes have toppled. Love that alliteration. Um, they're fine. They've fallen onto cushions. They're okay. Don't worry about them. Um, the Love Songs of W.E.B. Du Bois by Honoré Fanon Jeffers. And one of the reasons I want to read this is just because I've heard it's amazing. The second reason is that I love fiction by poets. There's something about the language and this is um, such a book. Also, this looks deceptively small. I think actually this might be the longest one, is it? No, no it's not. This one's 790 something pages. But yeah, I don't know anyone who hasn't loved this. Um, and it was Matthew Schrapper that really, really made me want to get to it. So uh, I would like to see that this summer. It's also coming out in paperback soon, so I may well pick that up on my travels because what I'm planning on doing is a lot of these books I have um, second copies of so I can sort of leave them as I go while I'm traveling around the UK and Northern Ireland over the next few weeks and well months I keep saying it weeks I think it's because psychologically that tells me it's not very long but actually it's three months 
three months it's three months away from home so um yeah anyway um the other one is monica ali's love marriage i did say i was going to read um her first novel brick lane before my 40th didn't read i don't think any of those 40 books before 40 that i said i was going to we'll work on 50 before 50 because i've got 10 years to do that and that seems more realistic but again another book that i've only heard brilliant things about so really really keen to get to it don't know much about it at all i think it was mercedes that particularly made me want to read it it was something about something about women having their fannies out or something and that just made me sort of chuckle to myself isn't it weird the little things that make you think of certain books like i know a lot of you uh have been picking up um the wonderful ryan o'connell's book because it's the book that made me say penis the most so therefore has become the penis book um there's a lot of it in it and then last but not least how did i get through those so quickly that was like almost one a minute ish um Last but not least, I have Pal Mares by Gail Jones. Now, when I talked about this, some people got very cross about it because they're saying that, I think there's something about, there's a question mark over the author writing about this period in Brazil's history when they're not Brazilian. Now, I have various different thoughts on that that I don't want to go into. However, I do, I think if everyone wrote the story they know, it would be really boring. And I think, like... People should be able to write all sorts of things. Yes, they have to research it. And yes, they have to be um, responsible in what they're writing, be it about people, places, cultures, countries, anything. But yeah, I just think there is a point where we're almost looking to cancel people or to question things a bit much. And there are some people who should be cancelled, like she who should not be named. But then there are other people, I think, who say an ill thought thing or an educated thing or or a learning or or also actually it was Stella Duffy said sorry we're off on a right tangent about this Stella Duffy I know said in a meeting I went to that sometimes you're gonna say things accidentally that are wrong and you're gonna piss people off by accident but without pissing people off you're never gonna have the conversation that corrects it anyway that was a very long way around of me saying I'm gonna give this a go um I'm not in touch with my ex-Brazilian husband anymore um not like we haven't like just cancelled each other it's just we're speaking of cancelling uh, we're just not in touch now um but uh so i won't be able to say whether it is true to that brazilian experience or cultural moment but i would like to give it a whirl i've heard amazing things about gail jane's writing i think this cover is stunning i know that just made me sound a little bit basic and um yeah i'm gonna get the paperback though for this one because this is also really really heavy and um yeah i've got to be careful with how much weight I pack and have to cart around but also just like how many books I take with me that I can pass on and pass off and ones that I should pick up on route and all that kind of stuff anyway I'm gonna go I hope you enjoyed that it'll have been a premiere I think so hopefully I'll have been chatting away with quite a lot of you in the comments I'll be back with another video I'm not sure what it is soon I think oh no I do know what it is it's gonna be my mid-year free cap tag and then next week you're gonna get uh, and then you'll get a vlog and then next week you'll get um my June haul and June wrap up then you'll get another vlog from me off in the wilds of Wales when I'll actually I'll be off in the wilds of Northern Ireland and then Scotland and then I think after that for July you're going to get a video on Wednesdays and a vlog on Sundays and that's how I'll run it and if I can make any extra content I will but we shall see anyway I've ended up talking way longer than I meant to after being so smug about doing it in under 15 minutes with 15 books well done Simon Oops, a daisy. I hope you're doing super duper well. Let me know what big books you have on the TBR. Like, what is the biggest one or the biggest top three? And when you're planning on reading them, are you planning on reading any other big books over the summer? Let me know. And if you've got any thoughts on these, if you love them, brilliant. Tell me. If you didn't, don't tell me that yet. Tell me that after I've read them. I'm not going to probably read all 15 by the end of this summer, but maybe by the end of the year I will have. We shall see. And maybe I'll report back. But uh, until next time, I'll speak to you all soon. Bye.